listeners welcome to itihas a indic history podcast and you're listening to episode 50 of the season vijayanagara finally we are nearing the end of the gajapati vijayanagara mini series that had started off exploring the roots of rivalry between one of the greatest medieval hindu kingdoms of the 15th century the implosion of the sangama dynasty of vijayanagara the civil war among the gajapatis the rise and collapse of saluvas followed by a smooth coup by the tuluvas against the saluva successors finally in the last two episodes we looked closely at the rise of the tuluvas the dramatic entrance of krishna devaraya his journey to the lion's throne of vijayanagara with the help of saluva timarasu and his military campaigns against the rebellious vassals of ummattur this episode and the next we will look closely at the campaigns of shri krishna devaraya against the orissa gajapati sion prataparudra and their intense personal rivalry that added fuel to the already burning fire between these two hindu powers not many people realize that the aftermath of this long simmering war between these two great powers was much more dramatic and in a way anticlimactic than what it is usually made out to be the romanticized nature of shri krishna devaraya's life that's usually presented is in reality devoid of the intense tragedy that it ended with rarely are we told the events that transpired after the gajapati vijayanagara war had ended and before the death of krishna devaraya there and lies the real story and these aspects of his life is what we shall look at in the next two episodes before we even proceed looking at the military campaigns that were undertaken by both krishna devaraya and prataparudra during the seven year long war between them let us look at the situation in orissa gajapati kingdom at the moment of prataparudra's ascension to the throne this perspective will not only do a quick recap of the events that transpired from the vantage point of gajapatis but also help us understand better how krishna devaraya was looked at by him from the other side one of the source references that i will use to present this side of the story is history of orissa volume 1 by rd benerji and also an interesting blog article written by manjit kesri nayak the decline in the power of orissan gajapatis and the break up of its empire practically begins with the ascension of prataparudra to the throne At the time of his ascension in 1497 CE, Prataparudra ruled over an empire extending from the Hooghly and the Medinipur districts of Bengal to the Guntur district of what is now Andhra Pradesh. Even a large portion of the highlands of Telangana, such as the city of what we call now as Khammam, also belonged to the Gajapatis, according to his own Vijayanagara rival, Krishna Devaraya. The first phase of the long reign of Prataparudra which is from 1497 to 1541 CE was very favorable to the expansion of Orissa as the incompetent Bahmani sultan Mahmud was on the throne of Bidar and the splinters of the Bahmani kingdom were already formed in the Deccan there was hence no chance of another muslim invasion into the Krishna Godavari Doab from his perspective In the extreme south of the Indian peninsula the Salwa dynasty of Vijayanagara was fast approaching an implosion in like we saw in the earlier episodes Tiluvanarsa Nayaka was already an imposing figure in the Vijayanagara empire Vijayanagara kingdom was falling apart due to its declining rule of Salwa dynasty the Rajvolu and Antavaram inscriptions of Prataparudra Deva confirm that he marched south willing to capture rameshwaram and met with success till penar river after capturing the vijayanagara capital for a brief period of time while prataparudra was halting over the city with the oriya army planning for further advance severe drought and a food crisis struck odisha in the year 1507 to 1508 ce forcing him to abandon his advance for relief operations back home king veeranar simha of vijayanagara eventually took control of the lost regions in his absence the following year 
Hearing about this, Pratap Rudra Deva prepared for a second Sadan campaign and marched again. But Pratap Rudra was helpless to further reoccupy the recently lost territories in South. As the Muslim Sultan Hussein Shah of Bengal invaded the northern borders of Orissa, and the Muslim raiders had come inside the Oriya heartland of Puri, overrunning the Katak fort, which was gallantly defended by his Gadanayak general. Ananta Samantaraya The Jagannath idols in the Puri temple were secretly moved out from it and hidden in an island of the Chilika Lake Pratap Rudra had to rush back to defend his kingdom while the raiders were defensively held up by his chosen governor Bhoi Bidyar Pratap Rudra chased the Muslims out of Orissa till Hooghly's Mandaran fort where they were defeated despite the treachery by generals like Govind the Bidya Dahar from his side by the time he emerged victorious over Bengal's Muslim sultan a new and energetic king Krishna Deva Raya ascended the throne in Vijayanagara who was rapidly revolutionizing the army with modern weapons war horses and training from portuguese as well as the arabs it was also a moment when the gajapati kingdom was fast approaching a state of political stagnation to which the great religious reformer Chaitanya Mahaprabhu of Bengal gave permanency between 1510 and 1533 CE Chaitanya is said to have put efforts towards invoking the revolutionary neo vaishnavism spiritual movement Pratap Rudra on his return from Bengal campaign also slides into this environment because of his soft devotional heart partially halting this much required military endeavors for the survival of the empire a few conspiracy theorists doubt that some of the chaitanya's followers were former court officials of the hostile sultan hussein shah of bengal the portuguese traveler duarte barbosa who arrived in india at vijayanagara in 1504 ce and stayed till 1514 ce mentions that the kingdom of orissa was comprised of very good fighting men and the king possessed a mighty army of foot soldiers besides mentioning the ongoing skirmishes between vijayanagara and orissa he also mentions that the northern extent of the orissa kingdom was still the river ganga which was often called as gauri gua by the oriyas then it was an important place for pilgrimage Beyond the river was the kingdom of Bengal with which the king of Orissa or the Gajapati was also at war often. The Oriya army was primarily composed of the peasant militia called Paikas. The recruits were selected from different castes and tribes. But for infantry combatants the Chasas or the peasant class people were mostly selected from an age of 20 for military service because they were physically and mentally tough. they underwent rigorous and dangerous training and were ever ready for battles paikas were also the ancient most combatants of orissa and the term is derived from the sanskrit word padadika paikas used various mantras for chanting during warfare to keep their morale boosted even in the face of impending death the presence of the itakaras or also known as dancers and entertainers gives a clear picture for the knowledge of experience war time psychological and motivational efforts for the soldiers the ghumra folk dance is believed to be the ancient most form of motivational war dance the main strength of the oriya army depended on infantry cavalry and squads of elephants the gajapati title for the kings of orissa literally means the lord of war elephants elephant corps and cavalry had subsequent designations it is said that in one battle with krishna deva raya pratap rudra used 1300 elephants 20000 horses and 5 lakh strong paikas there would be some obvious inflation to these numbers but we get the picture about the composition of the gajapati army when krishna deva raya succeeded his brother in 1509 ce Gajapati Pratap Rudra's chance of territorial expansion came to an abrupt end because the greatest emperor of Vijayanagara had two ambitions like we saw in previous episodes 
one being the conquest of the eastern coast from the gajapatis and the second being humbling the power of muslim sultanates up north the first few years of the reign of krishna devaraya as we saw earlier were spent in suppressing rebellions but he seemed to have very wisely invaded the southern provinces of the empire of gajapatis before tackling the adil shahi sultans of bijapur the vijayanagara empire had three strategic advantages over the gajapatis they only faced two frontal enemies the gajapatis and the bahmani muslim sultanate while its flank was completely covered by the ocean without any enemies threatening them the gajapati orissa was facing hostile warring enemies on three fronts including the vijayanagara empire new muslim sultanate of golconda and the muslim ruled bengal in the north besides this the bahmani sultanate towards the west was not reliable of its allegiance if hostilities broke out pratap rudra had to scatter his military deployments in all the three fronts unlike vijayanagara which was able to concentrate its complete strength on one opponent while containing the other with defensive deployments the second disadvantage for orissa was the location of its far outstretched frontier forts away from the capital katak whereas vijayanagara's capital was in the immediate vicinity of the frontier forts controlled by few oriyas giving them capability to rush supplies forces and aid faster than orissa the third disadvantage for orissa was the size of sea trade activity or very little sea trade which is also mentioned by the portuguese traveler duarte barbosa however barbosa's presence in the vijayanagara empire himself at the time was due to open sea trade activity on the west coast of india the west coast trade routes opened the path for advanced foreign firearms weaponry and war horses to be availed by vijayanagara besides the trade experienced foreign mercenaries were brought in to train the army with new combat techniques krishnadevaraya was facing enemies on two fronts of his empire the bahmani sultanate was a prevailing threat to the vijayanagara empire along with the gajapati kingdom on his eastern front krishnadevaraya had revolutionized his forces with increased manpower and foreign weapons technology of the time for instance before his time horse mounted archery was only known to the armies in north india but as per the written accounts of the time at one point 60000 horsemen were being trained in vijayanagara to shoot arrows with perfection while riding on their horse continuously the arab tradesmen were selling the finest horses to the army and the portuguese were supplying them with firearms training and weapons southern port of batkal in the west coast of india was a market from where horses were imported from outside and the dealers coming from the vijayanagara empire paid the price of 200 to 300 portuguese gold coins along with a government tax of 40 such coins for every horse krishna devaraya also had created an effective spy network that ultimately proved to be more deadly during battle he also had a naval strategist like the prime minister timurasu on whose advice he first decided to invade the outstretched oriya army in the eastern front rather than the muslim adil shahi sultanate of bijapur towards the north as the first move vijayanagara forces subdued the velama rulers of bhavanagiri along with others in the year 1512 ce these were the vassals of the gajapati empire who had assisted the oriya army in building the udaygiri fort before The 17th to 18th century ethno-historical classic Rai Vachakamu in detail talks about the strategy and reasoning employed by Krishna Devaraya in his decision to attack the Gajapati strongholds in the Andhra Pradesh. Let us now look at the excerpt of the dialogue between Sri Krishna Devaraya and his council of ministers Appaji or also known as Timmarasu, Ayyamarasu, Kondamarasu and Bacharasu. which shows the strategy succinctly the ministers address the emperor in voices of praise and say this quote this time thanks to the full flooding of the krishna river 
we been able to defeat the barbarians up north and force them to retreat to their respective places once the waters of the river subside we should continue forward in our campaign against them but in the meantime during these two months of ashada and shravana let us take the forts and strongholds of the turks that lie south of the river as well as the garrisons and forts of the gajapati then we will be free to march all the way to ahmednagar unquote to this the emperor krishnadeva raya responds this way quote your suggestions sound sensible and besides were we to continue now and march against the barbarian kingdoms north of the river then the forts in the gajapati's territories would pose a threat to our success surely the people manning those forts at udaygiri kondur kondavidu bellamkonda nagarjuna konda and venukonda would block the flow of supplies and equipment we would need for our campaign we must not allow that to happen yes let us first capture all those various provinces and post our men in their forts then we can be sure that our supplies will move freely unquote when all the soldiers had assembled their gear and prepared themselves for the march the great krishna devaraya mounted his horse and marched forward at the head of his well armed force he marched through the forts of gutti and gandikota on his way to udaygiri the forts of gutti and gandikota belong to the pemasani nayakas who were the vassals of vijayanagara the pemasani nayakas had ruled the regions in and around tadipatri gutti and gandikota for over 300 years they were appointed as the nayakas by devaraya the second of sangama dynasty in the first half of the 15th century so marching up to the krishna river krishna devaraya suddenly attacks oriya stronghold of udaygiri fort as it was closer to the vijayanagara capital and then the gajapati capital katak and relatively also away from their regional administrative headquarters of kondapalli prataparudra deva was not expecting an attack on the udaygiri fort as there were good relations with krishna devaraya since his coronation 3 years back or at least that's what he thought the fort was also impregnable with difficult terrain around it allowing access only through a narrow passage which could only afford one man to walk through straight udaygiri was guarded by the able general and prataparudra's paternal uncle tirumala rautra raya a strong oriya garrison of 10000 infantry and 400 horsemen guarded the fort with constant vigil and with nearly 8000 men deployed on the outskirts of the fort krishna devaraya launches a sudden attack with an army consisting of 34000 infantry and 800 elephants which clearly portrays a 1 is to 3 outmatched figures within the armies facing each other the wits of the oriyas were pushed to unimaginable limits under the attack and due to the natural strength of the location they put up a stubborn resistance the writings of fernao nunes mentioned that there was a tooth and nail fight put up by the oriya soldiers who were strongly determined to not give up their positions krishna devaraya had to take the lead himself and his best techniques of seizing the fort and his most capable generals failed in making much headway for a long time his army had to cut through boulders from the surrounding hills to find a suitable position and path to lay an effective attack on the heroic oriya garrison which held out for 18 long months while suffering from starvation prataparudra had deployed his forces on the northern frontier against the muslim invaders of bengal and was unable to send immediate help to the trapped udaygiri garrison krishna devaraya's forces were able to track this helplessness of the gajapati with their spy network spearheaded by the sthanapatis or the ambassadors in the vijayanagara embassy at orissa the oriya garrison had to finally surrender after a good deal of resistance and extremely heroic efforts to hold their positions under starvation and this surrender happened on 9th june 1514 CE along with the capture of Gajapati's own paternal uncle 
the Vijayanagara forces also carried away the Balagopal idol from the fort as a war trophy. Here I have to digress a bit and talk about this Balagopal idol that was brought to Vijayanagara as a war trophy. Meenakshi Jain in her 2019 book called Flight of Deities and Rebirth of Temples talks about this Balagopal idol in detail. She cites the epigraphical and recorded evidence of Sri Krishna Devaraya constructing the Krishna temple in Hampi in 1515 CE to commemorate his victory over the Gajapati ruler Prataparudra at Udaygiri and to instate a stone image of Balakrishna he had acquired as a war trophy. This is also confirmed in the chronicles of the famous 16th century traveler Domingo Pais who visited Vijayanagara during the reign of Krishna Devaraya. Meenakshi also mentions the findings of one A.H. Longhurst, who was the head of the Archaeological Survey of India, the southern region during the British Raj. It is recorded by him that he had found a severely mutilated image of Krishna in a corner of the shrine, where it had been thrown away mostly by the Muslim soldiers during the sack of Hampi in the aftermath of the Battle of Tillicota in 1565 CE. If you are a first-time listener who is tuning into this podcast and this episode directly, then most likely you haven't listened to the Battle of Tallikota episode. I would highly recommend you to check out this episode, which happens to be the first episode of the season of Vijayanagara. This is a must-listen as it sets the context and tone for the entire season. Coming back to the Balagopala idol, it now resides in the Government Museum of Chennai. It depicts baby Krishna seated on a pedestal with his right foot resting on a lotus flower. The arms were missing, but in all likelihood, there was a butter ball in the right hand, while the left hand was placed on the left thigh. The image including the pedestal was about 1 meter in height. It originally stood on a large detached stone pita. At the consecration ceremony, Krishna Devaraya presented the deity Bala Gopala with gold and silver vessels and the income of nine villages for its daily worship. The Madhava saint and royal preceptor Vyasaraya composed hymns in the honor of the arrival of the deity in Vijayanagara. And with this, we shall end this episode. In the next episode, we shall continue the fascinating military campaigns of Sri Krishna Devaraya. against his arch rival Prataparudra of Gajapati kingdom these campaigns have some dramatic moments and events among them which even deserve to be made a full length movie around them i sincerely hope the listeners enjoyed this episode if you did please hit the subscribe button and leave a rating and a review wherever it is that you're listening a huge thank you for taking the time to listen to the show i hope to see you soon in the next episode Till then this is Narendra Vikram your host and narrator signing off hope you have a great week ahead